Hi, my name is Luke. Um, I am a paranormal researcher and demonologist with the group Black Dog Paranormal from Minnesota. We mainly do our operations in the state, but we will travel to basically where the work is. Um, I've been doing paranormal investigations for about a year professionally. Um, I've always had a fascination with the paranormal. Um, just, or just things that can't be explained. Um, the darker things in life. So I was just naturally attracted to demonology, um, just paranormal investigations, and just the paranormal in general. So, um, yeah, that's basically how I got into this. Um, just during the COVID lockdowns, you know, I had the perfect opportunities to study online with multiple academic courses to get a degree in uh, demonology. So um, I'm very uh, excited I did have that opportunity to do that and professionally pursue uh, a career in uh, demonology and paranormal investigations. So demonology is the study and behavior of demons. So demons are unclean spirits. They come from very many different cultures. Um, they come from different parts of the world. Um, every major civilization has had ancient texts that has pertain to demons, and uh, being a demonologist and coming to learn to approach demonology with a multi-faith approach um, is definitely the best way to go about being in demonology. Um, if you believe in the Christian tradition of the angelic beings that rebelled and fought with Lucifer as their master. I wanted to go into demonology because everybody is a paranormal investigator. They know about spirits, they know how to work equipment, but finding a educated and respected demonologist is a needle in a haystack. There's a massive shortage of demonologists. They study the behaviors of paranormal activity to rule if it is kind of in the demonic category or if it's in the paranormal category. And finding those type of people who are knowledgeable on that is very hard to come by because there's fine, fine, fine tunings on it that will completely shift the case in a new direction, how the Ramsey case was. So I wanted to be a demonologist on that because there's a shortage of them. They are people who study the behavior of it. They don't conjure up and summon spooky shit for their own amusement. They study and learn the behavior of demons so they can educate the public and investigators and assist them when they are needed. Uh, my main goal for Black Dog is to make it so we just keep doing what we're doing with the way that we operate the group. We don't charge money for any consultations or investigations. We act on good faith. We believe in helping people in good faith that truly need it, that need answers. So we rely on you know, excellent service, excellent uh, experiences, and word to mouth is what we rely on, and just good exposure. So I would like Black Dog to maintain that reputation for our over-the-top service and our over-the-top special uh, the over the top specialists that we have who are knowledgeable on each background on what someone may be dealing with that is ready to 
be able to help them in any way. Um, all four of us have a completely different background and a speciality, and that what makes us stand out because you know we're not just four paranormal investigators. We have a demonologist. We have a professional lead paranormal investigator. We have a medium who's usually very spot on, and we have a paranormal investigator on our team who also knows the business side who can make it so we get out there and people do recognize us. So that you can help people. We can help. Yep. My favorite piece of equipment would be the PSB-11. It's the PSB-7, but you got two channels. You can use AM, FM at the same time. You can do forward, reverse. The sweep rates make a difference. And this is an updated one, but it's got a noise uh, filter type of thing. And that's really useful because I know that the spirit portal box that uh, like Huff, uh, that Stephen Huff, I believe his name is, he pioneered. It can tr completely kills the noise out. You get clear, like crystal clear responses, and it's a good way for communication. Just in general with spirits, or just with any entity that you're talking to. So I've gotten like the most intelligent responses on this. I've gotten like you know, I've asked what day it, it, you know what day is it and it said Thursday and it was Thursday so this would be my favorite piece of equipment right here to use so well the stuff that you see on TV like ghost adventures and stuff you know on a travel channel they have TV producers who work for the network that you know, they're doing their jobs as producers, so they have to kind of maybe exaggerate, enhance a little bit, or straight up lie about what they're capturing, which is an uncommon. So, out in the field and what you see on TV can be two completely different things. It's reality and what you're seeing on TV. Reality and what you're seeing on TV. I don't have to repeat myself a third time because it should be comprehended that quick. You know, and it's very important that you don't go out in the field based on what you see on TV because it's on TV. You need to absolutely study the paranormal, to connect with people in your local area because thankfully social media now has forums and groups for people just like you who are looking. And it's important to study connect and be knowledgeable about the stuff that you're going to be going out and investigating because you don't know what will be lying there waiting for you. The dangers of just hopping into a paranormal investigation without doing any research is the repercussions are so severe that sometimes they can be absolutely life-changing. Um, you can walk into a place that has demonic infestation, you can form demonic attachments, you can form a demonic presence who is there and they always like to go for the weakest link. So that being said, you take something home with you, now you have an infestation going on, which would be like, you know, knocks, banging footsteps, having things moved around, just small things like that and then they would turn to the oppression obsession stage and then very rarely, but numbers are still rising, possession. And knowing what area you're being, uh, what area you're going up to investigate in is extremely important because you don't know the area. You, you, you need to know the area, what part of town it's in, is it, is it a safe part of town, if it's abandoned. If, it, if there is like an owner, contact them. A lot of them are cool and okay as long as you're respectful, but if it's in an area that you don't know, it could be in a bad side of town, and I, I have seen uh, many forums of investigators going out to areas they were not knowledgeable about and having their equipment robbed and being robbed or having anything harmful done to them. By regular people, right? Yep.
It would be that I'm not somebody who is so fascinated into the dark stuff that I advocated for uh, recreational use. I to combat into the back into the light. You have to know the darkest. You know, it's the it's the different side of the same coin. And you know, with that being said, and what I had said earlier that there is a shortage on people who have this knowledge, it's that I take my role on it seriously and there's a lot of decisions and critical thinking that I have to do and um, I do take on you know, things that people might think I'm absolutely crazy for taking on because they're so frightening and just so, just. Do you have room to be scared? Um, no, I don't have room to be terrified. I mean, I get nervous, but I wouldn't say I get, like, on a general setting, most of the time, I'd say if I did the seven days a week a different place, six days out of the week, I would be completely fine. Nothing would really phase me all that much, but there are instances where I would get nervous about a certain thing, like being grabbed, um, having a whisper in your ear, um, having banging and knocking behind you in a small, dark, confined area that you can't see. But I don't have any room to show fear or be scared because my job requires me to go into these places that are completely evil and completely scary. I mean, I had to crawl inside at Ramsey, I had to crawl inside of this crawl space, buried in this narrow crawl space because there was banging and growling inside of it and I had to figure out where it was coming from inside the crawl space and if anything was in there. So I wouldn't say I have room to be scared, but I do get nervous about some things else. So a black dog formed, just trying to find people that didn't think you were crazy. And being able to try to find people that were like-minded. But I don't know how to connect with people who are into this stuff locally. But there's that page on, yes, on Facebook, Minnesota uh, Paranormal Research Society or something like that. And I've seen people type, you know, looking for somebody to like investigate with in my area who can help me and teach me and I was just like you know looking for people south metro area 20 minutes south of downtown who would be interested you know I'm proficient in demonology and um, learning you know do things out in the field and Paul made a comment saying PM me and I messaged him and I think it took him a couple days to message me back. I don't know. Something about like the fucking approval message from Messenger. But come to find out, he lives like 10 minutes away from me in Bloomington. And him and I kept in contact, and Beth was also on the page. And she was, you know, I, I believe I was the only one of the only one or two people that she reached out to off of that page and it took her a couple days to like kind of reach out to me but um i got a good feeling from beth and her and i kept in regular contact and she was telling me about how she has that intuitive side of her and how she's a medium and i thought that was really interesting because i wasn't getting any sense of like she was full of shit and then paul him and I were still keeping in contact, and him and I um, have a love for nicotine, so we went to this place called the Burn Lounge in Burnville, and just a big lounge that you just go and buy cigars and smoke, and smoke inside this big lounge. So uh, him and I just talked and just uh, hit it off, and you know, we like the same music. You know, him and I think about things the same way with a lot of stuff, and. Um, you know, we're just kind of both laid back and you know, not as outgoing, but he's definitely the very, 
is just probably the most easiest one in the group to open up to. And I got that kind of vibe from him as well. So him and I headed off and we made a, a, an investigation date for Ferguson Cemetery in uh, Norwood, Young America. And the investigation between him and I went really, really, really well. We were just collaborating at this point, but you know the collaboration went really well. And I guess Paul told me I was doing, you know, a good job on my first um, first uh, investigation. So I listened to him a lot, and we just uh, had a good time. We were really calm, and we got a lot of cool stuff that happened that opened my eyes to being out in the field, and I'm learning a lot still from him being out in the field. And you know, we're all learning from each other, and. Everybody has that special background that we all are proficient in, so we share that. And then I really wanted Beth and Paul to meet because I thought that this would be like an unstoppable fucking juggernaut force of a team. Uh, I uh, advertised myself as proficient in demonology, I believe, but and I, and I did say I was a demonologist, but now that I've continued the education and I've graduated multiple I can definitely say now I'm a professional demonologist and I'm not a self-proclaimed one anymore. Um, you guys are though, you, the, the three of you together are like a dynamic duo and it's crazy. Do you feel like something brought you guys together? Yeah. Like these, okay, that was my next thing. Um, that's kind of how I feel about you guys to be honest, like with me as well. I don't know why, but I'm completely open up to all of you. Right. So. The investigation that sticks out to me the most was the Ramsey case. That one was probably the most dark, the most evil, the most ominous. Just everything about it was what a demonologist's wet dream to be. And I was totally happy to be on that case and help the homeowners that desperately, desperately needed answers. And I know it took a lot of time to sit down and try to comprehend everything that they were telling me and showing me. And all the things that we caught on that investigation. And I think still at this time, present day, as of right now, that I would say is definitely our most like compelling investigation and it's it was the investigation that had a negative effect on everybody um, I was affected in different ways Beth was I'd say the most affected I think but we all prevailed from it and it's made us stronger and smarter so what I would like to get out of it is some answers that I've heard about this place to see if it truly does live up to the things I've heard. Um, it seems like an interesting place and I've heard a lot about it from reputable people. Um, I would like to try to communicate with any energies here that need help. Um, it seems like a positive place for energies and I think it would end the night very well if we did get some answers and from um, questions from people who we can't uh, physically help tonight, but we can actually help them with what they're going through in that afterlife.